What's up and welcome back to the channel. This week we're taking a look at dialogue. It's the foundation of so many stories and the main driving force behind moving your movie forward. Without good dialogue, you essentially just have a highlight reel of very pretty looking pictures. And that's not exactly ideal if your goal is to make a movie. Visual storytelling, of course, contributes to the story and you can tell a lot through visuals. But in order to really get to know the characters, they have to have dialogue. So dialogue is hard for a number of reasons. For one, you have the emotionally driven side. That's where the story beats have to make sense, the characters have to say things that are relevant to them. And then you also have the technical side, which is how do you put dialogue together? It has to work on both fronts. So let's dive into that and talk about the emotional or the character side first. Before we actually get into the actual editing part, we need to know, what makes great dialogue? In my experience, great dialogue has a few common traits. Number one, it's concise. Two, it contributes to the overall plot and moves the story and the characters forward. Three, it's not exactly like real life dialogue, but it does try to mimic what we think conversations sound like. And fourth, it has to reveal something about the character. Have you ever watched a movie and the dialogue just kind of seems to drag on and on and it doesn't really seem to have a point to it? Where the characters all like monologue and ramble? You want to try to avoid lengthy dialogue. Most of the time in real life, people don't monologue for minutes on end with a mix of exposition and feelings in there. Film dialogue is no different. Dialogue can be subtle, it can be unspoken, and we tend to communicate with just enough words to get our point across. It also contributes to both the plot and helps move the characters forward as well. Most of the time, the most engaging lines in a movie are the ones where it reveals something about the character and it helps deepen our understanding of their motivations or what that character is trying to accomplish. For example, a character could have just found something out that's deeply disturbing and something that is sort of a twist twist, but they have to keep on going with their mission as well. Like for example, in Blade Runner 2049. Remember when you're editing your dialogue, you really want to take out scenes that are just fluff or don't actually add to your character at all or the overall plot. This will really slow down the pacing of your film and audiences may feel a need to disconnect, especially if they feel like this isn't going anywhere or it's not related to the plot as a whole. Lastly, it's not like real life dialogue, but it does try to replicate what we think conversations actually sound like. Narrative, documentary, anything that you watch really has a sort of pacing to it. And that's established first in the script but then also in the edit as well, when we're trying to piece together everything we've shot. For example, most of the time writers try to write dialogue that sounds natural, something that when written on the page looks like something that someone would say, but sometimes that has to be adjusted in the edit or even on film days, if for example, the dialogue is dragging a little bit or if it feels unnatural when spoken. And if there's things like too much exposition and no emotion at all, sometimes you have to change it up in order to make the dialogue more compelling. As a filmmaker, remember, you always have the power to edit it as well. A lot of times they'll say that the movie is formed for the third time in the edit. What you're doing is essentially trying to re-piece together everything you've shot. And sometimes not only can the sequence of things change, but also some of the dialogue too. Different genres also typically require different types of dialogue and different pacing. For example, if you're watching action, the lines may be delivered faster and with a greater urgency as well. In drama, you may decide to slow it down and really get in there with the characters and kind of hang a little bit more on the dialogue. Whereas, for example, something like sci-fi may require you to mask some more exposition in the dialogue and try to mix that in with character moments and emotionally driven moments as well. So if that's from the character side, what can we do from a technical standpoint? As an editor, you can use things like J-cuts and L-cuts to piece together dialogue in a more natural way. A J-cut is called that because it forms a little J on the timeline so that the audio from the last clip comes in before you see the video. It's pretty easy to pull off. Just make sure the video layer of your clip is selected only and then move it over to the right. Just be careful and make sure that you have usable material on the first clip as the video will keep going into the second clip. The other edit is an L cut. This is similar to the J cut, but now you have the audio from the first clip continuing into the second clip. This is my wife's father's place uh, originally. <laughs> you married into it. 
This forms the L on your timeline. These are useful tools because you can sneak things like reactions into your L cuts and then have the dialogue start. Having just hard cuts back and forth in a dialogue scene is okay, but it can feel a little stale and unnatural at times. So you can cut to different angles that help tell the story like reaction shots. As a director, Blocking scenes properly so characters can interact naturally and respecting the 180 degree rule is very important to help the audience follow the scene and knowing to get things like room tone can be really helpful in your edit to blend everything together. The goal is to subtly mask your edits and help dialogue flow more seamlessly. So let's talk about some other things that can help get you started. As you can see I've been using Premiere Pro for this but Resolve will be set up the same way on the edit page for the most part. You'll have your project and timeline set up pretty much the same way. So first is have a solid organization structure. You can do this any way that works for you, but here's a structure I use for smaller projects. The raw I have, I can split multiple ways, like by cameras, A cam or B cam, or if it's a larger project, typically I like to go by day and create smaller reels for selects. I do that by creating a new sequence for each reel, and then I can stack my timeline and pull in what I need into my main edit. Either way, it's up to you, but pick a style that works for you and stick to it so it becomes second nature. You can right click in any project and create additional bins as well as you need them in order to split out your footage. Have a system for your timeline that makes sense. Typically for dialogue scenes, I'll use the first two or three video layers with the first one being my selects and then alternate takes on video layer two and three. That makes it easy to then go back and disable and enable different takes as you're building your edit so you can see what works best. Eventually, I'll go through and clean up the timeline on my final passes, but at first, it's more about getting it all on the timeline and messing around with it until I'm happy. Most importantly, as you're editing, you can speed up the cuts, slow them down, let the conversation hang, cut to more reactions. All of these are creative choices. What's important is that the story drives the edit what are you trying to say with the dialogue? How is it helping your story? Would a reaction help sell the message of the scene more? Or should we keep the camera on the main character, for example? All of these are valid questions and worth asking as you're going through the edit. One thing I've found that really helps me if I'm stuck is to just keep going with building your edit. You can always come back, but it always helps if you're stuck to have the general flow and cuts in your edit first. You can then go back and start refining your edits, adding in reactions, adding different angles, to support the story and trying alternate takes to get it exactly the way you want. Remember, dialogue is not something you're gonna get right the very first pass through. It's likely gonna take you several passes through the dialogue and the story to make sure the pacing is right and that it serves the story in the best way possible. All right, so that's where I'm gonna leave it for this video. Remember, if this felt a little bit overwhelming, that's okay. Dialogue is one of those things that takes a lot of practice to get right. Also requires collaborative input from other people sometimes and for you to go back and sort of make changes as you go along. That's why I'm a big believer in putting something down on the timeline, even if it's just roughed in there, but you can always go back and make multiple passes to try to improve that dialogue and really refine it by the time you get to your final edit. But it's always better to have something there than just staring at a blank timeline. After that, I'll then do additional passes until I'm finally happy with what I have or I feel like it really fits the story. And remember, things can always change too. For example, once you go back and rewatch the scenes that you've already done, you may feel like you need to move some of that dialogue. You can cut stuff out and make it a little bit more uh, leaning towards like subtext, for example, where not everything needs to be said, but things can be implied. Or with additional passes, if you have the time and the budget, you can always go back and do things like ADR, um, especially if you're not direct showing the character's face in order to add lines in or uh, change a line of dialogue, for example. And that's pretty common in movies as well. As long as it serves the story, that's what's most important. Most importantly, you'll always have tools at your disposal to make things better. For example, you have the script to guide you, you have the actor's performances, with, which once you get in there and really watch what they're doing, that always sparks creativity, even for me as well. And you can always run it by friends and family, the director, the director of photography, whatever the case may be, to see what they think about it. And they could also have suggestions, because remember, filmmaking ultimately is a collaborative effort and other people may have insight that you just haven't thought of or that you don't see at the time when you're making your own edits as well. Until next time though, go out there and create something. La de